What is good guys, Charles and Team COG, coming to you guys here with an updated Fire Fist deck profile. So this deck took a tremendous loss in the form of Call by the Grave going to one, and that really, really hurts the strategy. I don't think that this deck will see a increase or boost in protection consistency until the Tri Brigade comes out. I do have a list for the Tri Brigade that I've been working on. It's just, you know, the Fractar plus the Centaur guy is like a one card uh, Eagle, which has a different point of combo lines. Also the Shriek, the uh, Sharp Wings, the Wicked Wings, the Link 4. He has a lot of cool plays with him. You can end on him and then have a Panda in hand and then you can summon the Panda. During your opponent's turn when you flip your counter trap, not only negating something but proccing Shriek and Shriek will then target and banish a card. And uh, if Shriek moves, he can summon cards from the deck like Elephant, you know, things like that nature. So this is the list I have currently right now. Uh, we kind of, nothing really changed main or extra deck wise to be completely honest with you. Uh, however, like we did take the loss. I did add in like a new a Swallow is in here and Swallow has some pretty interesting plays that uh, a lot of you guys were telling me to do. So for the most part, this is the list. Uh, there's not, like I said, unless you want to put a lot of money towards like tactical tactics, uh, triple T's, you know, then yes, you could do that. But at the same time, this deck is very normal summon reliant. If they mess up your normal summon or your normal summon meets any form of disruption, anything like that, the deck really can't do anything. And that's always been the problem. It's just, you know, I am still playing one call by the grave because the way that I see my one ofs, I should see call by the grave every hand. And yeah, so let's just go ahead and jump into the main deck and extra deck. Also guys, we actually have a few more play mats left. They have no zones and I actually am getting ready to put an order for another wave of zone play mats. So if you guys want to wait and get your zone play mat, go ahead. But we do have, I think, two more non-zone play mats if you enjoy non-zones too. Also, if you guys want to help support the channel, hit that join button down below and become a member of the Crusade. It is just an awesome, wholesome community. I can't really say any more. Everything, everything that goes into the channel gets put back right back into it. So uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the profile and get on with it. So three elephant. I've long, this is like my favorite card in the entire deck. I've all, this is like the Mermel, or what is it? Abyss, what is it? It's Atlantean Prince, excuse me. The Atlantean Prince, uh, Netabyss. This is like, this is our for our deck here. Uh, however, you know, it definitely, it, <laughs> if it gets impermed or veilered, we kind of stop in our tracks. But uh, what this card does for the deck is phenomenal. It allows us to start our plays while extending them, and then it gets us any level 6 from our deck, which is a plethora of cards from Panda for, to Swan to Elan. I also play Coyote as a form of extender to help make uh, Eagle, which of course is the, uh, which will probably be replaced in the future when we get Tri Brigade, but yeah, so three elephants. Elephants is definitely awesome in my opinion. Uh, and just always remember, guys, like this card is the correct like attack stats to be turned into an all mirage in the worst case scenario. So I didn't remember that, so I thought I'd pass that on. Then we have three panda. Panda is awesome. I mean, this card is phenomenal. I know I've seen a lot of people play two, play one, but this card is what lets you combo off. And like the raven and panda combo is just. Still one of the best combos the deck has. Uh, you just got to make sure you use this guy's effect at the right time because he does lock you into Fire Fist and that is very problematic. A lot of times throughout my combos, I'm either, I only use him if I have to or I'm holding him or I'm searching him at the end of my combo string. So during my opponent's turn, I can fire off the Panda and get that uh, recursion near my opponent's turn. And this will actually be a way that we can proc off Shriek, uh, the Wicked Wings, the Tri Brigade, Wicked Wings, whatever you call them because we'll have this in our hand and then we'll flip over the counter trap Sinto during, during our opponent's turn. We can then proc the panda from our hand, summon the panda. Panda's effect will simultaneously summon another monster while still triggering the Shriek. So then you get like you summon back Rooster, add a card, and the Shriek will trigger on a separate chain to the panda because panda was summoned, banishing a card on the field, which is totally, totally crazy. But I think you have to play three pandas, especially, especially now that Call by the Grave is gone. Panda will be like, probably be used very aggressively against that card in the sense of every hand trap that hits us, we need to have like the ability to fire off Panda. So do keep that in mind. Um, moving on, three dragon. Like I said, nothing's really changed main deck wise. Dragon is still super busted. This card is not a hard once per turn. So if it leaves the field or you have multiples out, you can use those effects. Uh, it allows you to, whenever you activate a fire formation card, you know, you get to set a fire formation trap from your deck to the field, which is busted. It's our monster reborn. It's still, it's still pretty strong. Um, I have noticed a lot of tri Brigade combos looping this guy with Tiger King, which I don't know. Like, if that's the way the deck has to go in order to be good, I might have to move that way. But I've tried my best not to do, like, Tiger King loops because I just feel like they're... It, it looks good on EDO Pro is what I'm saying. So, anyway, three Dragon. I thought about cutting this down to two, but still, you got to play three. And now, more importantly, you have to play three because Call By is now gone. 
you got to make sure you resolve your dragon or get access to it. So like maybe you activate Tinky and it meets an Ash, that could be a total game, like that could decide the fate of the game right then and right there. But uh, moving on, we have three Raven. This card is super good. It combos off very well with Panda. You know, Panda Raven is still plus 11. It's just, it is remarkable. And uh, not to mention like this card gets you access to any fire formation you need. Tinky, Tensu, Yoko, Liang Peak, you know, you name it, it gets you there. Now moving on. We still play Double Rooster. I actually bumped this up to three, and then I actually quickly put it back down to two. Uh, two is the perfect ratio. You, you don't want to see it when you don't want to see it, and you want to see it when you do, and, that's, and two is the perfect ratio for that. So this card, of course, if you don't know, on summon adds you any Fire Fist monster from your deck to your hand. That is a hard once per turn. And the non hard once per turn is you can sack off a Fire Formation on your field to set a different one from your deck. And that is not a hard once per turn. And it's just really good to pay under evil. It's definitely... Also really good in its own sense because you can activate this Sin Dome and like Monster Reborn, so it's pretty good. Uh, continuing on to Coyotes. Uh, Coyote is just, you know, like you always need, it's a, if you control a Fire Fist, Fire Formation you can, and no other monsters, you can special summon this card. It's just a good extender that we can special out. We can go like Tinky, Special Search, Special This, Normal, Extend, and we get to keep an extra, extra body on board to link off with, make XYZ with so that we don't have to commit to the panda so often. But I do believe this will be traded out for the centaur or the fractar whenever we get it so that we can just make uh, one card eagles because one card eagles is super nice. It does also remember it's a 2000 body. It's almost like it's our cyber dragon or the uh, fire fist cyber dragon. This guy just pops down. You can <laughs> like activate a <laughs> activate Tinky. That's all you got to do. And as long as they don't negate it or see anything to it, you can special this and then whack into Herald, which is pretty good. So... Not too shabby. Uh, four one ofs. We have one ram, one bear, one buffalo, and now the new addition to the deck, uh, one swallow. So ram is just a better is better than spirit. So ram is an also a really solid target to special summon off of your uh, elephant. Bear is in here because it it's spot removal and there and sometimes I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes like if the opportunity presents itself and it's the only route I have to go, a fire king loop is definitely not off the table. Buffalo is just a fantastic extender, like, you know, having the ability to special summon him for free with Eagle, or having the ability to proc off cards like Engine and Dome by sacking him off, uh, or you can use him and his effect to sack off, like, where is that? You can sack off uh, Dragon and Dome. The Dome will reborn the Dragon, and the Dragon's not a hard once per turn, so then you can use Dragon's effect again, which is really good. Uh, this is a card I was testing, and so its effect to summon itself is not a effect, it is a condition. So you can't just like smack him down for free, which is which is not the best. But what he is really good at is you have the ability to add this guy, ritual summon with him or fusion with him, and then your panda can bring him back, which then gives you non-targeting protection. He's also another way to get access to the Sento in deck in case you are like, uh, dragon gets stopped. So he's, and he's a really bit, like I said, he's a 2000 body, so that allows all your beast warriors can then not be targeted, which is super powerful and is also very protective. So Swallow is a new addition to the deck and I really like him. Uh, I've been one time in testing that I had to summon him as on effect, and it was just straight busted. It was like Liam Peak, Engine Dome, and I just smacked him down, and Engine and Dome activated Monster Reborning, and it just, you know, it was it was just really good. Allow me to push for extra damage, for sure. But that's it for the one ofs. Uh, I still think I'm still learning some more combos of this deck because this deck is pretty heavy in the combo section. Ram does something. I know there are certain car certain combos with Ram, and I'm still still just gotta sit down and learn them. I know like if you only open ram and you normal ram, pitch a card, do a card, if it's like a three card combo, ram plus something else, I just gotta learn them and figure out what to do with them. A uh, card that I would actually maybe consider playing at more than one in this would be the buffalo. Buffalo is just really good. Like I really like buffalo. It's just the ability to ritual him off, use him off, and then use his effect to come back is just, you know, it's it's really good. And finally, for the last Fire Fist monster, Eland. Eland is our main negation. I wish this card destroyed, but it does not. This card has uh, two effects, which I think people should... I need to remind people of. Uh, once per turn, you can discard a Fire Monster, then set any Fire Formation Spell or Trap directly from your deck. So if you open multiple Ashes, you can pitch an Ash, set Sento if you didn't get access to it through your combo, and then, like, Eland, Sento's two interruptions, so on and so forth. It's also very note to know, like, once we get the Tri Brigade, once we end on this guy and Dome and then, like, Shriek, you can use this to negate something, pay cost by getting rid of Dome, then Dome brings back something, trigger and shriek, the wicked winds of the Tri Brigade, and then you banish a card. So 
definitely some cool interactions will come once we get those tri brigade cards for sure uh moving on three ash blossoms what can i say this is the fire deck you don't have to play this it could be three hand traps of your choice i even thought about maybe since we lost two call by the greatest playing another two hand traps just to combat the meta but essentially like what i learned is this deck gets beat by hand traps so you want to play cards that allow you to play through hand traps and quite frankly you don't want to brick your hand with more hand traps. It already sucks opening multiple ashes in your hand in a deck that needs every card or that has three to four card combo. So, but anywho, three ashes for sure. Uh, moving on, I don't think anything changed spell wise. We've still, I'll run through these real quick. Three Tinky, Road of the deck. Three Tensu, this card is busted. Additional normal summon allows us to play through hand traps. And also since this card can be activated multiple times so we can like bounce it, activate it, trigger panda, etc. For sure, these three are the best. Um, it just, like, like I think I explained in my previous Fire Fist, uh, in every Fire Fist video, this deck has such particular combos, whereas, like, Tinky cannot count like Rota does. So, like, if, you know, like, you can open, like, two warriors, like, the is sold combo, two warriors, reinforcements on the army can become any war you want. So, technically, reinforcing the army plus one warrior is combo. Uh, Tinky's not like that. Tinky's not a... Tinky replaces the card. You need Tinky because sometimes you have to sack off Tinky to like use Elephant's Effect and stuff like that. So Tinky does not facilitate the extra part of a combo. It is part of a combo. And some three card combos, some two card combos, you need Tinky to be Tinky. And it does, and it really needs to resolve in order to get those. Uh, but moving on, we finally do two Dome and one Engine. Uh, the reason that we do this ratio, and it's been this ratio since I've built the deck, uh, Dome is your ritual spell, engine is your fusion spell, Dome is monster reborn when it's sent off, and you have numerous ways to send it off, either by using like Elon's effect to pay the cost, Buffalo is like the best way to do it, uh, you can do it like by different ways, like with uh, Rooster sending it away, or maybe you haven't used uh, Elephant, use an Elephant, you definitely just have a bunch of ways to send this off in monster reborn a card. And engine just recurs back in the graveyard. One of the best things ever is ritual summoning and fusion wing summoning, and then using buffalo in the graveyard to sack these two off. And then you just get to so much resource advantage. Like so you get another monster on the field, which could be a dragon, which facilitates more engine. You get to add back like a panda to your hand for a follow up. So for sure, for sure, these cards. And this is the ratio I advise playing. I think I will like even a few times I thought about dumping Dome because when you open two of it, it stinks. But I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And if I have to take the cost of opening two of them in some hands, sometimes it's worth it. So, yeah. Uh, moving on, we are, I don't know if this was in the last profile, but we are still on the two Liang Peak. Uh, Liang Peak is remarkable, in my opinion. I, like, this card is another fire formation card, because it always counts as fire formation that you can just activate multiple times, which trigger off, like, Dragon, Panda... And uh, not to, this card just has, you very seldom use the 10 effect on it, but maybe I know like when the Tri Brigade come out, as I've preached throughout this entire video, uh, you can really facilitate counters on this. And then you can like summon cards from your extra deck, like Shriek is a good one. The Link 3, I've seen people use this to summon the Link 3. Link 3 specials from the hand, you go into a Link 4, yada yada. Uh, the combos are definitely there. I just really like it because there's like a three card combo where you open this and then like you end on like, I've already showcased it on the channel before, you end on like Eagle, Eland, Swan, Cento, Dryden, and stuff like that. And it's just three cards, and it's just super powerful. And it's you need Lian Peak to do that, and I really like Lian Peak. Uh, the effect to Surge comes up. The effect to... I've not had to use the effect to protect you in the battle phase, but especially now moving forward, it might come up for sure. For the final one, we play one Yoko. Uh, I definitely have slacked off, guys. I'm not going to lie. I've slacked off in not buying the the other one. There's Yoko, and then there's like... Another one, which I can't remember. I just remembered it, and I totally forgot. It's the one that stops spell and trap cards. Uh, you definitely need to get that one, and you definitely need to side deck it, because it's this format's definitely going to be interesting to, for a combo deck, especially a combo deck like this that is fragile. We're going to be eating a lot of hand traps, and we're going to be losing to a lot of hand traps. So, for sure, if you really, really, really want to survive uh, this format, you might want to look into getting tri tri triple T's. And uh, Yoko is just good because it's a Mystic Mine out because somehow that card lived on the list. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me why. Mystic Mine lived. Somehow. We all need to shed a tear for anybody who's lost a Mystic Mine, including me. But um, Yoko is just... We're, we have a main deck out to Mystic Mine. That's all that matters. And again, this is another one that you could just activate and activate and activate so that it can trigger stuff like Panda Eagle. Or Panda Dragon, excuse me. Now on to the non-fire formation cards. We have Monster Reborn, 
the Saki one of Call By and the World Legacy Succession. I do believe Succession is new. I can't remember if I showcased in my last profile of uh, Firefist, but I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a profile, so I thought I'd get it to you. And now we just, and then we just wait for Tri Brigade essentially, but uh, Call By the Grave, it's a Saki one of, so by the law of Charles and by the power of Crusadia Crawler throughout my entire channel, Call By the Grave should be in my every hand, but I don't think it'll work like that. Uh, Monster, just these two are just firm extenders. You could arguably even cut Call By the Grave and play a second succession so that you can ensure seeing it. But, you know, whenever you go to normal summon your elephant and effect veiler smacks it and you have that one sacky Call By the Grave, it's nice. But, yep. And then I think this is new to the deck list. I can't remember one cento. I got tired of open multiples and opening multiples led to more bricks than it did good. So you have the ability to get access to the card because, like, elephant shuffles back. So you just, yeah, you elephant shuffles back. So that's what I was totally spaced out. Elephant shuffles back, which allows you to reuse this card. Elephant shuffles it back. Activate a card. Regrab it back off of dragon. Maybe you maybe you've already grabbed it off a of dragon. You can't have a way to summon it. You know, get dragon to use that effect again. You can have swallow, swallow, special summon, normal summon. Grab it again. You just have the recyclability of it that I don't see no need to play to. Um, I wish there was a better trap out there than other than what exists, so that we could play it. So then we did have another target, but sadly this is the best trap, I think, for Firefist, personally. Uh, that's it for the main deck. I believe it's 40 cards. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the extra deck. The extra deck is 15. I finally got a 15. Nothing has changed in the extra deck. We're still waiting for Tri Brigade. And like I said, moving forward, I don't know if I'll play any other Tri Brigade monster in the extra deck except for the Link 4 Shriek the Winds. And I'll show you what card you can cut for that. But uh, We do play 2 Eagle. Eagle was what makes this deck go. Eagle is the Foolish Burial, plus it allows us to optionally pay for cost if we want to. But what I mean by that is the Eagle's effect is you don't have to pay cost to activate Fire Fist effects. So Eagle can just sit and you can just choose to activate effects or not, which is really good. So two Eagle. And then I guess one Peacock. Peacock is just, Peacock's actually really good. Uh, the fact that this card cannot be targeted, it's like a Borlo Dragon except for it's in themed. Uh, you just really want to make sure that when you use Peacock, you haven't used Panda to make it or Panda that turn because if you use Peacock, steal opponent's monster and you can't link up into anything, they just get the monster back, which was almost pointless unless you're going for game. So do make sure when you make Peacock, you haven't used Panda already that turn, so then you can link up into like Boral Sword, Apollos, and stuff like that with the Peacock. Uh, one All Mirage. We'll go here for All Mirage. One Unicorn. One Boral Sword. And then one Apollosa. So this deck can really crank out Apollosa without going to Panda. So I re you really need, and it's very affordable now due to the Mega Ten, so. Everybody should have access to Apollosa. Uh, you definitely can play it in this deck. You don't have to, but it is, like I said, a board with two interruptions is not the best, but if you just smack an Apollosa on there and you have an additional three or two more interruptions already on a board of two interruptions, because this deck can consistently put out Sento and Eland, so then it just makes your board a whole lot better. And let's also remember that Swan activates during the battle phase, and it's the only time it can activate. It's a Water Down Dryden, and just a good way for Swan to protect the bow as well to allow you to get all your negates in it. Boral Sword is, you know, like to push for OTKs, but I found like you don't really need it. Your all your Fire Fists get very huge or are very big or big enough. Uh, this would definitely be replaced for the Tri Brigade Shriek of the Wicked Wings or whatever its name is called, uh, for sure. That's it for the Link Monsters. Moving on, we are still playing to Tiger King again, guys. I'm so sorry I've slacked off with everything going on. I totally forgot to upgrade my Tiger King, so I am sorry. But anyway, two Tiger Kings, because Tiger King is actually a really phenomenal card. It floats, which is the, all, the entire part of the Tiger King loot. And then also it uh, grabs you any fire formation from your deck and sets it. But the most important thing is this card is like a high pressure card. So even if you're going first and you end on this guy, your opponent practically has to solve this guy. Otherwise, the next turn, you're just going to skill drain the entire turn and practically gives you free range to play. So they have to solve this guy. And by solving this guy, if they don't solve the eagle... First, you just practically get to summon two from the deck and go crazy. So he's definitely a very high pressure card that sometimes I don't like to end on because he doesn't do anything. But a lot of sometimes I'll remember on like, hey, this card is practically says deal with me or reap what you sow sort of thing. So I do like it. I do plan to get ultimate soon, guys. I am so sorry. Forgive me. Moving on to Cardinal. Cardinal is the last of the Fire Fist, uh, I believe the Fire Fist cards in our extra deck outside of Swan. Uh, this card is remarkable. This is exactly what you want to do. You want to like during your opponents during your turn You want Tiger King shut everything off makes Cardinal spin cards back without any sort of like has it without any sort of 
confrontation and you just practically look at your opponent and you just smile and be like, you just got beat by Fire Fist. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, but for sure this card is phenomenal. It's just another Dryden in the deck. And you know, like I said in previous profiles, you can make like Unicorn on your turn three, shuffle something, the Cardinal shuffle again. So you have the ability to shuffle back like three cards on like your turn three, which just clears the way for you to like push with all your Fire Fist for game. So it's really good. Uh, onto the XYZs, we have Dryden, Chalk and Nine. Uh, these two are practically, I mean, what can I say? Chalk and Nine is the most generic. We can make Chalk and Nine, then put a Dryden, and then Dryden just pops cards. Dryden can pop your own engine, your own domain to have recur things. Dryden can pop your opponent's cards, and then since Dryden is 0-0, zero, zero, we do play Swan, so like during the battle phase, if they try to rush into the battle phase to solve the Dryden before we can do anything, we can just use Swan to protect it, which is, of course, very important. But Dryden is a very good addition to the deck, if you ask me. I really try to end on Dryden as much as I can. And then we have, for this is just a flex spot, you can actually play any card you want. If you guys are playing a different card, you can play Tornado Dragon, but I figured if you play against the Pendulum, best deck, um... If you guys have been on my stream, you'll get that joke. Uh, Tornado Dragon is just a good ability to hit Snipe Pendulum Scale. It's a good good card to also hit um, back row decks. And uh, one Dweller because every like Eldritch is still untouched. An Emancipator is still strong. Even though I don't think this touches An Emancipator as much because of the Block Dragon. But I know it touches Eldritch. So Eldritch stinks, so we don't want to lose to Eldritch. Uh, for the final card, we play one Swan. Swan is amazing in time. We can summon Swan, burn, win. Uh, Swan is a water down Dryden. So even though if we can only get to Swan, your opponent practically, if they don't, they have to deal with this before they go in the battle phase because if they don't, Swan can pop something. And Swan is just very good in conjunction with, like I said, Dryden because sometimes Dryden's low attack. They'll try to go into the battle phase to clear the Dryden, but you can just pop it with Swan while still keeping the Dryden activated or keeping the Dryden alive. And the same thing with Apollosa. Sometimes like you'll... They'll bait like two negates off your four Apollosa and then um, they'll try to go into battle phase because they have like a 1900 monster. You just go Swan to pop the monster and then you still get to keep the two negates on the Apollosa, which is really good. So Swan definitely, definitely shines in those type of matchups. And like I said, the burn damage is really clutch because I'm, you, this deck you practically can't lose in time. Uh, so your opponent just goes, that's time of the round, the opponent goes, can you do anything? You go uh, engine, fusion. Burn for 200, win game. It's just it's just really nice. So, uh, yeah, that is it for the list, guys. I'm sorry there's not been too much change in the entire list. I know, like, the extra deck has practically changed the same outside the addition of Apollosa. And I know that, I'm pretty sure, extra deck, main deck-wise, excuse me, nothing's really changed except for Call by the Grave being cut, Sintel being reduced down. And I think I had Liam Peek at two when I did the last profile. And the addition of Swallow, two in the deck has also been added. But uh, I really do enjoy this deck. It's very high ceiling, very big brain complex. That'll be interesting to see exactly what hand traps I get to lose through this format playing this deck. But it is fun. It's a good deck to sit down, play play, your, play Solitaire with to practically see what I can do. But uh, we're just waiting for Tri Brigades, guys. So if you guys would like this video, remember to give it a like, comment, and subscribe. I'd like to hear your guys' opinions, your guys' thoughts. Let me know how your guys' day has been going. Let me know how your week's been going. And also, guys, if you want to join the Crusade, hit that join button. And please, guys, we only have two more mats of this left. Get the Breeze before Einstein's mat before they're all sold out. Or just hold out for the second wave of the zone mats. Whatever you want to do. So thank you guys so much for your support. This is Charles from Team COG, signing out.